Hi guys, it's Ashraf from WizEdu, and today we're going to be doing some harder examples on type 2 trigonometry questions, which are equations with restrictions. So what exactly makes these examples hard? Well, in this question, you can see that instead of being given one trig equation, we are actually given two equations, and we also have two different angles. We have A and we have beta. So these are the two key features that make this a hard trig question because you have to get the variables x, y, and r for both a and beta. But the method remains the same. We'll follow the exact same method to solve the question. So step one, for a, we are already in the form of trig function equals number, right? So now we can go on to step two, which is to look at our restriction. We are told that a lies between 90 and 270. So we, if we had to put that on our Cartesian here, we have 0, 90, 180, and 270. The restriction is basically telling us our possible quadrants are quadrants 2 and 3 because those lie between 90 and 270. And now if we also had to look at our equation, we know that sine A equals positive 2 over 3, and sine is only positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So from these two Cartesians, our common quadrant is quadrant 2. So A must lie in quadrant 2, where x is negative and y is positive. So using this information, we can now use Pythagoras to find our missing um, variable, which in this case is r, I mean, sorry, x, because sine A equals 2 over 3, which equals y over r. That's our definition for sine. So we infer that y is 2 and r is 3. y equals positive 2 because we've established that y is positive in the second quadrant and r is positive 3. So from Pythagoras, we know that r squared would equal to x squared plus y squared. Reason is Pythagoras, right? So 3 squared equals x squared plus... 2 squared, so x squared would equal to 9 minus 4, x squared equals 5, square root both sides, okay, and we have x equal to plus or minus 5. Now we're going to take minus 5 because we've established that a is in the second quadrant and x is negative in the second quadrant, okay? So for a, we know that x is negative root 5 y is positive 2, and r is positive 3, and we'll just keep this on one side. Now we can look at our second equation, which is cos beta equals negative 3 over 4, and we can apply the exact same steps to get our variables for beta. So we're already in the form trig function equals number. We know cos beta equals negative 3 over 4, and the definition of cos is x over r, right? So x is going to be negative 3, and r is going to be 4. Now x has to take the negative in this case, because r has to be positive because it's a length, right? So x must be negative. Now we can look at our restriction, which says that sine beta is greater than 0. So that basically means that sine of beta is positive because anything greater than zero would be positive. So we know that sine is only positive in quadrants one and two, okay? But we also know that cos beta is negative. And because cos is positive in quadrants one and four, it's only negative in quadrants two and three. So between these two Cartesians, our common quadrant is quadrant two. So beta must be in quadrant two, where x is negative and y is positive. So we've already correctly assigned the negative 2x over here because we've said it's negative 3. So let's go ahead and use Pythagoras to solve for y. r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Reason is Pythagoras, right? We can substitute in 4 squared is going to be equal to negative 3 squared plus y squared. y squared will equal to 16 
minus 9, okay? So y squared is going to be equal to 7. y would be equal to root 7, and in this case, it's positive root 7, right? Because we've established that we're dealing with the second quadrant. So now for beta, okay, we know that x is negative 3, y is positive root 7, and r is 4. So now we can use these variables to substitute them into this expression over here. So that's going to equal 7 over, definition of sine is y over r, all squared. But now next to my y and r, I'm just going to put a small b. So I remember when I'm substituting variables in, I have to be taking them from here and not a. So just so I don't make a mistake, that's going to be plus 5 over the definition of cos is x over r. And I'm just going to put a small a there. So I remember to take variables from a because the angle I was working with was a. You have to take the variables from the angle you calculated the variables from because all of these only work for beta and all of these only work for a. So you can't interchange between them. So that would be 7 over y of from beta is positive root 7. Okay. And the r is 4. That's going to be all squared. That's plus. Now x from a is negative root 5. And the r from a is 3. And that's all squared. So that's going to give us 7 over 7 over 16 plus 5 over 5 over 9. And if we further simplify this, that would then become 7 times 16 over 7 plus 5 times 9 over 5, which is then 16 plus 9, which gives us a final answer of 25. So that's your final answer for this example. So the next example we're given is also quite similar because we're given two equations, right, with two different angles, theta and beta. So we'll approach this in exactly the same way. We'll first deal with the first equation, find its x, y, and r, and then do the same for the second equation. So for this first equation here, we aren't in the form trig function equals number, so we'll just invert both sides um, and say that would be sine theta equals negative 12 over 13 to get it in the form trig function equals number. Now, our definition for sine is y over r, right? So we can look at our restriction here, which basically says that tan theta is greater than zero, which is an indication to us that tan must be positive. So tan of theta is positive. Now, tan is only positive in quadrants 1 and 3. So theta must lie in quadrants 1 or 3. And we also know that sine theta is negative. Now, because sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2 because of the cast rule, we know it will be negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So our overlap between these two pieces of information is quadrant 3. So our angle theta must be in quadrant 3, where both x and y are negative, right? So both x and y will be negative. So let's use Pythagoras to solve for x because we have y and r. So r squared equals x squared plus y squared. From here, we know that r is going to be positive 13 and y is negative 12. So that'll be 13 squared equals x is unknown, y is negative 12 all squared. That will be 169 minus 144 is going to give us x squared. So 25 equals x squared. We'll square root both sides to get rid of that exponent. And x comes out to be plus or minus 5. But in this case, we're going to take the negative because we've established that we're working with the third quadrant where x is negative. So now for theta, we have our x, y, and r. x we found to be negative 5. y we found to be negative 12. 
and r is positive 13. So now we can go ahead and solve for x, y, and r for beta as well. So step one is to get into the form trig function equals number. So we can invert both sides. So cos beta will be 6 over 7. And definition of cos is x over r. Okay, now we'll look at our restriction, which says that beta lies between 180 and 360, right? So beta must be either in quadrants 3 or 4. And we can look back at the trig equation we've given here, which is that cos beta equals positive 6 over 7. So cos, due to the cost rule, is only positive in quadrants 1 and 4. So our overlap here is quadrant 4. So beta must lie within quadrant 4, where x is positive and y is negative, right? So we can use this information to solve our question. We know that x is positive 6 and r is positive 7. Now we can put that into Pythagoras. r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Our reason is Pythagoras, okay? So we have 7 squared equals 6 squared plus y squared. So 49 minus 36 equals y squared. 13 equals y squared. We'll square root both sides to get rid of the exponent. So y comes out to being negative root 13. It's negative because we know we're working with the fourth quadrant, so it won't be positive. So now for beta, right, we know our x. We know that x is positive 6, y in this case is negative root 13, and r is positive 7. So now we can substitute these into the equation. So 5 tan theta plus cot squared beta is going to give us this. 5, definition of tan is going to be y over x. And I'm just going to write a small theta next to my y and x. So I remember when I'm substituting variables to look for them under theta over here and not beta and plus cot squared beta. Now the definition of cot is x over y. That's going to be x over y all squared. I'm just going to put a beta there. If you didn't know your definition for cot, you could have replaced it with 1 over tan squared beta, but that would have added an extra step to, the, uh, to solving the question. That's going to be 5 multiplied by y we know for theta is negative 12, okay? And we know x is negative 5, okay? That's going to be plus for beta x is 6 and y is negative root 13. So these two 5s will cancel off and these negatives will cancel off, which will give us 12 plus 36 over 13. Now, I think it'll be much easier to present our final answer as a mixed fraction as opposed to adding that 12. So that would equal to 12 plus 2 and 10 over 13, which would then easily be 14 and 10 over 13. So that would be our final answer. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this explained some of these difficult questions and you are now able to solve them all by yourself. Thanks. Thank you.